Greetings, mortals, and welcome back to the Broken Pact, the mythic odysseys of Theros show here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show, sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. I am your dungeon master, or should I say your Therosian chorus for this adventure, Ruben Bressler, and these heroes are my players. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and I am playing Astarok, who is a Minotaur fighter of the Boros Legion, but he's not in Ravnica anymore, so he just wears the Boros signets. And um, also, he should probably have chains on him somewhere because he made a, a deal with some some uh, some people uh, in Avernus. But, you know, you were all over the place. Who knows who, who has connections to what anymore? So, yeah, that's him. I am Riley Silverman, and I play Safia, who is a Nyx-born cleric, who is a worshiper of uh, Thassa, the god of the sea here on Theros. So I am a native Therosian, and uh, I believe, I may be mistaken, but I believe we got raided by Mercs of Mischief. Is that correct? Ooh. Hmm. Or is that old time? Raid, Mercs. Might have been okay, earlier. Well, be old. Be old. <laughs> okay, well, they, you know... Just hanging out, having a good time, and we're all welcome. We're people all... who came here without raiding. That's yeah. right. Thank you, thank you, people who stumbled upon us upon their own volition. That's all for me tonight. <laughs> um, I guess I'll go next. I am Danielle Radford. I play Lydia. Lydia is a human rogue, a swashbuckler. Um, travels on the sea. Lydia loves the sea. Uh, we're not sure if the sea loves her back, but it's definitely one of those like. You sound a little bit weird when you talk about your love of the sea. Is it like deep? Is it like intimate? <laughs> yes, it is. It's weird and gross. <laughs> <laughs> and she can also be very sweet, but she's very tough. Uh, and mostly she is a big old dummy. It's like, <laughs> if you fair, love the sea so much, deep, why don't you marry it? Okay, yeah, well, but I will, myself. if she'll let me. I will say <laughs> it's deep and weird and gross is a pretty accurate description of the sea. So that's a really <laughs> good point. A yeah. really good yeah. point. <laughs> I ship it. Hey everyone, <laughs> I'm Ashlyn Rose, and I play a uh, Selesnian Luxadon, uh, who is named Tuturu. Tuturu. <laughs> uh, and she is a kind of happy-go-lucky, um, free spirit who really cares about her friends and the people around her, good or bad. Um, she just kind of, you know, wants to see the good in people and uh, help those in need. So. That's too true. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And also thank you to our sponsors for this adventure. Uh, I, I think we sorted this out. First, we'll talk about uh, Hero Forge. Hey, that's a me. Uh, I'm a Riley. I'm going to tell you about Hero Forge. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Hero Forge is your best destination to get custom printed minis that you create, and you can paint them online and get them shipped to you in printed full color. You can also get minis made in a variety of different designs. So if you ever are just like, hey, I really love two of my characters. I wish I could make them make out. Well, now you can because you have Hero Forge for that opportunity, and that's fantastic. And as of today, very exciting. Hero Forge has added wheelchairs to their capabilities of things you can give to your characters. There are three different wheelchair options. There's a modern wheelchair, a fantasy town wheelchair for when you're feeling fancy, and then a combat battle wheelchair when you're ready to do some damage, which we're going to do tonight. So right. check that out. Go to Hero Forge and hey, tell them we sent you. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very cool. That dropped today and I was super excited for it. Uh, and also, uh, another of our sponsors is Die Hard Dice. Oh, was that was yep. was I supposed to do that one? I kind of thought we were doing another one. Hey, oh. you Kaye, mother, the the <laughs> <laughs> Die Hard Dice. You know how it is. Uh, ho ho ho! Now I have dice. I don't have the, yeah. the well, Jordan, yeah, sure. Jordan, oh, if you had a machine gun, you would know that you could check out a wide assortment of math rock click clacks <laughs> over at Die Hard Dice. They got dice sets to suit every whim, including calling the FBI when someone breaks into the safe. Uh, they're all reasonably priced, and if you enter the code uh, DH Dice in chats or go straight to dieharddice.com and enter code NATURAL20, you'll save 10% off your first order. Awesome. I knew that. I know. I just I knew you knew Jordan, right. but I was making sure everybody yeah. else knew. I think that's exactly. fair. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted we wanted to make sure that everyone out, out in the in the Twitter sphere knew, but we knew that you knew, but yeah, just making yeah, it easy. Yeah. 
we were um, just doing our classic comedy bit in the guise of Abbott and Costello, where Abbott doesn't know <laughs> anything about the sponsor, and Costello explains the entire sponsor. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. uh, and also, for those of you that don't know, you can catch up on all of our old episodes, podcasts, and coming updates, as well as everything uh, having to do with the show at our link tree, which is link tr dot so l i n k t r dot e e slash the broken pact, and that's all the information you'll ever need to know uh, to, about upcoming events and where our podcasts can be and all that good stuff. So, without any further ado, let us dive back into the broken pact, Theros. Episode three, Cutthroat Maneuver. We open, as we do, on a crab, sitting on a shoulder, as Odie watches their longtime companions and their new compatriots have dinner with a fellow seafarer, Captain Phineas Polyphemus, but also keeping a weather eye on the giant eagle sitting next to them, upon a perch, next to the Cyclops pirate captain. Our heroes were foisted together into the fighting pits and emerged victorious thanks to their prowess in battle and their command of magic, and in doing so, earned their freedom. The foursome walked back to the moray, their ship, and discussed where to head next. With naught but a cryptic vision from a sphinx named Menemai to point them, the group pondered their next moves while exploring a local farmer's market. They met a traveling bard, went for a drink or two at a local beer garden, and met with an oracle to hopefully gain further insights. As night grew closer, they were invited to dinner and parlay with an old acquaintance. The crew sailed a bit out of the harbor and moored to the dream trawler. The dream trawler. Ugh, easy for me to say. To meet with the previously mentioned fellow seafarer. But Captain Finn wasn't exactly forthcoming about his real reason for the invitation. It was an agreeable, if tense, meeting for a time, but as the captain continued to talk and talk and talk, he was not saying anything that the cadre wanted to hear any longer. A loud, sudden ringing noise exploded from just behind Captain Finn, sending the newly concussed eagle and captain tumbling forward onto the dinner table. Captain Finn pulls his head out of a pot of baked beans and roars. Anything you want to say before we roll for initiative? Odie, go back to the boat, now. And Odie scuttles out of there. Everybody roll for initiative. Ooh, and Danny's back on our boat, right? Danny no, because... brought onto no. this boat. Yeah, Danny's oh. on the boat with us. We've got Danny on this boat, okay. Yes. I bet yeah. he'll be useful. We decided that... I say, ironically. <laughs> we decided we made the call that Captain Finn would not have allowed us to leave somebody else back on our boat, just hanging out. So they haven't come on, the, our, on their boat. So I do have uh, the initiatives up <laughs> here, if you so choose. Are you okay, Ashley? <laughs> uh, oh, we're off to a great start tonight. Just great. I am <laughs> off to a great start. I actually am. I usually roll terrible initiative, but I did okay tonight. Oh, hmm. my. <laughs> Captain Finn did not roll great. Oh, great. I bet he rolled better than Tuturu. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, what initiatives do you all have? Mine is 24. Woof, that is a high initiative. Yeah, roll that natural 20, baby. 
Uh, mine is a 16. All right. Ooh, that's good. No, that's pretty sweet, you might say. Oh, I love it. That Fia a IC has a 14, yep. Yep. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off there. And Tuturu, what was yours? Tuturu rolled a one and has a minus one to her initiative. <laughs> I see. Yes. Tuturu is hiding under the table currently. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've seen the initiative count zero in quite a long time. That is a heck of a thing. Look at that. All right. Uh, Very nice. Very so perhaps, nice. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Astarok, you are up first. <laughs> You are just all across a dinner table from Captain Finn, uh, whom has taken some damage already thanks to the Shatter spell asked by Sophia last game. Okay, um, so Astarok is like pretty adept at figuring out when, when suddenly it's time to fight. It's one of the things he's best at, is determining <laughs> this is fighting time, and then fighting. So as soon as the uh, thing pops behind it, Astarok just goes, oh, we're fighting now, okay. And uh, leaps up <laughs> from the table he's at. Uh, how far am I from? I see. I can see the thing now. From Finn, you're like ten feet away. But you would, yeah. If you get up on the table, you would be right up in his face. So Astarok will jump up on the table and just be like, "So it seems like we're fighting now. You seemed okay." And then uh, he's not going to take out his axe because <laughs> he's not sure if it's like that that sort of fight yet, where you like try and kill people. Um, you know, it's hard to tell. Uh, he was trying to put you into an indentured servitude. <laughs> eh, it's happened before. <laughs> it has uh, happened so, before. That's true. <laughs> true. I can't so, Aster- <laughs> so, yeah. Asterok's going to leap up and just punch him in the face. Just give him a one-two with, like, both hands. Boom! Boom! And I uh, go for that big old eye. Okay. Uh, so you have, so you're going to make unarmed strikes here. Sure am. And you get two of them, right? Yep. And they don't, I don't even have to roll for damage. They'll just do six damage if I hit. Fabulous. All right. So the first one is uh, a dirty 20. Yep. Because I do get plus eight on these. Okay. So that's six damage. Yep. So Astarok takes his right and is just like, boom, punches him in the face. And then I got a, I got a 24. Also hits. <laughs> yep. So he just follows up with his left. And it's just like, ooh, all right, somebody give more. me the, so somebody give me the lethality rating of this, this battle real quick. Are we trying to kill this guy? <laughs> I mean, it would probably help. All right. Uh, Tell oh, me, I just did my Velma voice for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Moved Odie over to the other other ship. Um, next up is going to be uh, first mate Twinkle Toes, who heard the shatter, um, and th- that didn't sound great. So they're going to rush over to the door, uh, and their action is going to be to use an object to open the door, and look at Asterok punching on the table, uh. And a freshly shattered eardrums of Captain Finn, and say, "Are, are is, is oh, uh, are we are we killing him or what?" Yeah, that's is, what are I'm we, saying. Are we, are we, yeah, this is what I'm. Yeah, okay. So we're on. We don't know what's happening yet. Yeah, okay. no. I mean, and she'll I'm, draw a rapier uh, and prepare for battle. Seems okay. fair. Um, and standing in the doorway right there. Next up, we've got three. Uh, we've got three women on the far side of the ship: Adrienne, Melanie, and Carmilla. It's going to be Carmilla's turn. Uh, she's one of the ship's mages, and she is also going to move in that direction. Not quite sure what to do yet. Lydia. Okay, uh, Lydia turns to Sophia. So, uh, boss, is this like a pew pew or like a slash slash? Stabby stabby um, slash slash. Um, you know what? Dealer's choice. Uh, he threatened our friends. He threatened my ship. Um, y- you know what? I trust your I trust your instincts. All right, I'm going slash slash. And <laughs> she takes out her rapier, um, and goes and and uh, slashes uh, the captain with it. Great. You want to move around the table or onto it? Onto it, like nice. jumping onto the table, rapier in hand. Slash 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 slash. 
go ahead and slash. Oh, uh, eight. Eight's not going to cut it, as they say, uh, mm -hmm. as the naturally thick skin of the Cyclops uh, doesn't appear to be pierced on first brush. Also, uh, hey, thanks for the raid, Zombie Orpheus. Oh, thank you hey. for the raid. Hey. Welcome, everyone. Shields up. I still, uh, I still have a bonus action, right? You sure do. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my bonus action. Um, I'm going to use my fancy feet. I think, uh, or no, I'm going to disengage. I'm going to go ahead and disengage. Okay. Fancy feet. Good taste is yeah, easier. Yeah, because you have, I think you have to actually hit to use your fancy footwork. So yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, so your bonus action is to disengage. Mm -hmm. And you have about, you have, do you normally have 30 feet? You have, if you do, then you have 25 feet of movement left. Yeah, I normally have 30 feet. OK, where would you like to go? Uh, the room you're in is about 20 by 20. Twinkle Toes is standing just outside the door. And then there's the rest of the dream trawler um, outside. Um, I'll stay in the room, but I'm just going to kind of like get off the table like, ooh, my bad. Um, <laughs> so, like, go and crawl and then crawl off the table and kind of hide ooh. off to the side. Gotcha. I saw that going better the, in my head. So <laughs> move back to the corner where you can't, where you aren't necessarily in range of either uh, the other swashbuckler, the first mate, or Captain Finn. Yeah, yeah. And I do Got not it. look cool doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, you are up next. All right. Uh, I'm going to cast a little bit of a spell that is known as Spirit Guardians. Um, <laughs> and that is going to be go ahead and make a, a space around me that's going to be, uh, I believe it's 15 feet. So I'll mark it. I don't think anybody else will be able to see this but you, Ruben. So for the people who can't tell, uh, essentially uh, 15 feet um, around me, a circumference. Uh, radius of 15 feet around me suddenly fluttering through the air are little tiny sea creatures we're talking crabs we're talking shrimps we're talking corals we're talking barnacles they're all just having a good old time floating in the air and now that's happening there oh you did it for me great um and so that's going on and so uh i believe that um so any creature that is designated as hostile to me so that is everybody but my party uh, their speed is now halved in the area, and when they enter the area for the first time or start their turn there, uh, they must make a wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. And then if they fail that, they take a little bit of radiant damage from from the old the old Captain Sophia here. So that's going to be my action. And then I don't I don't think that I have a bonus action this round that I can do. That's going to be super useful. Let me just make sure about that. Uh, bonus action, no, because I cannot cast. Uh, another spell because it has cast level three spells. So yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be what I do for my turn okay. since I already attacked have, one. If you have a cantrip that you can cast as a bonus action, I will allow you to to do that. That but I do not one... have. All 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 my cantrips are uh, actions. Great. Uh, typically, I think I think we'd been doing this previously, where if you cast two spells, you can. If one of them was a cantrip. Yeah, I think right? that's actually res With bonus written, action. I think. Yeah. 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 Yeah with the bonus action, yeah. but I, we digress. Uh, so yeah. spectral tide pool uh, apparates out, uh, emerging out from Safia in a 15 foot. Is it visible to everyone else? Yeah, everyone sees it. Okay. Uh, it's real notice, it's real noticeable. Um, and I am, I am concentrating on that now as well. Uh, oh, that's concentration. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Um, Adrienne, the one who sent the message uh, to Lydia, uh, at the to sort of instigate this encounter, what is is sort of on her way over to see what the commotion is, but sees the spectral uh, seafood buffet and goes, "That's that seems less than ideal." Do we know what's going on yet in there, Captain Twinkle Toes? Um, I I don't I don't know what to what to think. Um. Well, I'm just going to cast Mage Armor, and she's going to cast Mage Armor. When in doubt, <laughs> armor up. Uh, and then the uh, Melanie is going to do the same thing. Melanie is going to come up to the edge and also cast Mage Armor. Uh, it's now going to be Dantalus' turn. Dantalus sees the everyone rushing towards the fighting for some reason, and he goes, screw that, and uh, attempts to cast Invisibility on himself. But 
unfortunately for him, he didn't know that one of the features of the Dream Trawler is that there are spectral eyes along the hull that make oh. invisible creatures visible in 120 feet of its radius. So he goes, ha ha! Shit. And just <laughs> runs, back, runs back over to the, uh, to the moray. Using his full movement to do so. As he as he runs, Astarok turns and goes, "You better be writing this down, song boy." Yeah, I, oh, for sure. This is I'm definitely my highest priority. Is that is that thing that you just said? It's now going to be Captain Finn's turn. Captain Finn goes, "What do you mean? What kind of fight is this? They're coming for my life. I am going to come for theirs." And he's going to pull a. Uh, He's gonna well, first out. he's going to make a saving throw. Oh, that's true. First he's going to make a saving throw. <laughs> and uh, like, yeah. thank you for the clarification. <laughs> five, on, five on the dice isn't going to cut Yeah, it. so he fails. So I'll, I'll make it easy and just roll the D&D dice since it's a lot of dice. All right. And that's going to be 31 radiant damage on him. Jeez. Wait, that no. Was... No, that is that is not true. That is that is a weird thing that happened between uh, D&D Beyond going... It, 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 it added up the Radiant and Necrotic options and put oh, it in. So I it see. is just six, 16 Radiant damage. Okay. Yes, I, I also Ooh. thought that seemed odd. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's going to take... Wow, correct. that's bonkers. That is, yeah. that is more than the amount of dice that I rolled should allow for, and that is why. So this is the Radiant damage, 16? Yeah, 16 Radiant damage. And also, yeah, and if the, if the Eagle moves on his turn... No, it doesn't. It has its own turn. Never mind, so... Okay, he'll take that and he'll go, ouch, you stupid animals. I'll come for you next, I suppose. And he'll pull out a uh, from behind his chair that he's sitting in a great club. Um, and it's he has reach. Club. So it is a great club. And uh, it's OK. He has no, 10 feet of reach, so he doesn't even need to get up from the table. So he will just swing it right at Sophia. And he also has two great clubs attack, great club attacks. So he will swing twice. The first one is a 17 to hit. Okay, that just that does hit. Hits me quite well, actually. And the other one is a nine, 19 to hit. Yeah, those both hit. Okay. These are, these are heavy, heavy great club hits. The first one deals you 15 bludgeoning damage. Okay. The second one deals you. 15 bludgeoning damage. Ooh. Okay. And then what is the uh what's the DC for my con save? Uh it's gonna be two DC 15 constitution saves because it's two okay. different hits. Yeah, no worries. Okay, yeah, those both failed. So I that Ooh. spell has dropped. That was All a waste right. of the spell slot last turn. Cool. So yeah, the right. so the uh the spectral guardians go away. How do I delete it? I don't know how to get rid of it. I go on Spectral Guardians. There we go. Uh, and okay. that's the, and then at the end of his turn, he's going to say, Ethan, get out of here. And then it's going to be Ethan's turn. Ethan, the giant eagle. Uh, and Ethan is going to uh, fly out the window and away from this combat uh, using its 80 feet of fly, of fly speed. It's effectively gone from combat. Dead Eyes, the navigator at the front of the boat, ha, seems ha, ha, non. Ha. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> seems nonplussed uh, by the combat, so he sort of glances over his shoulder and continues just standing at the steering wheel. Uteru. Hi. Yes, that's me. We've reached part zero of initiative. <laughs> yes. <finally. laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so Tuturu is now going to kind of peek up and look at what's happening. Oh, oh gosh. Okay. Um, Sophia looks really hurt. Um, who else looks really hurt right now? Just uh, me. Okay. Yeah, you, yeah, you're not looking too great, friend there. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, you look great, but you look like you're in a lot of pain as well. So that's that's the great I meant. Words are hard. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see how big of a spell I want to use to heal you and if it's a bonus spell. Oh, I forgot about how managing spells were so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Tutu is going to think really quick 
Um, because she was going to try to help with the Cyclops problem, but now she will he help with the healing problem. Um, do do do. This one heals for that much. Is that? Oh, that's at level four. Okay. Um, one d four plus five. That's not going to heal you for very much. All right. So Tutu is kind of like thinking, thinking, thinking. A lot of pressure. Um. Oh, what? What is the one that Mookie taught me? Okay. Okay. Um. I can do that one. Oh. 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 Uh, oh. Yes, that one. And she's going to kind of like. Um, where is she next to Sophia? Okay, cool. Sophia's, she's gonna, like, stand up, go over the table, um, to Sophia. Boop. Okay. Right there. And then, um, she's going to kind of put her, she's gonna kind of look at her, uh, may I? Is that okay? Because she just met sure. her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm on board. I'm on board. I can set, yes. I can set, I can set the treatment. <laughs> and then, um, she's going to kind of, um, say her little thing, and you'll see the little branches go out. You'll kind of see like the um, Celestian little branches and uh, leaves and everything, um, and little elemental looking spells. And she casts um, Cure Wounds at level two. Nice. Um, Great. So let's see what that's doing. Woo! And that's going to be 19. Oh, that's great. Thank you. You are most welcome. And then let me see if I have a bonus thing I can do. Bonus actions are somewhere on here. Bonus actions. Oh, I could call a spirit. No, I can't because I already cast a spell. So I can't do anything else really, can I? I can glare at the Cyclops. Well, you, you use your... You can do that. You certainly can do that. But I don't think I have anything else because um, you can only cast one spell per turn. So you can cast one spell of a level each turn. If you have a cantrip, or oh, for example, right. the most common combo that I think you that you used was healing word as a bonus action and then a cantrip as a standard action. Um, oh, okay. But if one of the spells you cast is a cantrip, you can cast two spells. Sweet. I don't think any of the cleric cantrips are bonus actions, unfortunately. So yeah. unless you use healing word, you're kind of oh. yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, I appreciated the spell you used. Just just put yeah, that out. Of course. There. No, I yeah. think totally, it was worth. Um, yeah. So that will be my turn for now. And I'm gonna try to figure out how to do the bonus stuff for my next one. So Okay. Something yeah. else interesting happens when you cure wounds on Sophia, and both oh. Tutru and Sophia see it happen. Tuturu, you reach out your arm, and as you do and touch Sophia's, the uh, tattoo that you have on your arm glows faintly a little bit. And yes. a similar glow on a similar spot on her arm glows and glistens a little bit. And you sense that there's some sort of packed connection that has happened here, and mm -hmm. both of you will add one to your armor class for the duration of this combat. Ah! Ooh. Sweet! I'm into that. Um, There's a gift horse not to look in the mouth. No, I'm very <laughs> happy with that. Uh, Sophia, you don't know exactly what's happening, but suddenly you feel like, happened. Yeah, you, you have, you, you're like, oh, um, new shiny tattoo, I guess. Yeah. Like doesn't normally happen, but thank you. Uh, you're welcome for now. I, I am so sorry as well. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know what that means, but we should probably run, just so you know. Yes. Astarok, top of the order. All right. Um, Astarok is also going to cast heal in the sense that if you remove the thing that is causing damage, it's <laughs> like healing. <laughs> yes. Yep. Right? Yep. Uh, so uh, Astarok will just be like, all right, that's how we're playing this. And he'll just grab his great axe off of his back and then just bam, bring it down. Uh, on Captain Finn. Sounds like a plan. The plan is to then do it a second time after that. Just FYI, if you haven't figured out the attack <laughs> patterns. Here. Okay, um, so that's a 27. Does that hit? Oh, that'll hit. That'll hit oh. Captain yeah. Finn. Oh, yeah. boy. So that's going to be 1d12 plus 6 damage on that one. That is 15 damage. Okay. And then I'll hit him again. Yeah. Oh, that's a natural 20, baby. Boom, Ooh. boom, boom, boom. You did it. All right. So that's 2d12 plus 6, right? Yes. 11. 12. Just rolled a 1. Oh, but I get to reroll 1s. 
There because you go. I have great weapon master. It's a one again. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so that is eighteen damage. Wow. That is a whole heck of a lot of damage. Captain Finn is looking pretty cut up. He's uh he's got a bloody lip. He's you know black and green around his eye, and he still grins menacingly. I'm sorry I have to do this, man. I mean, you seem like a cool, like, two-limbed pirate guy, but I don't know. I guess it was always going to come to this. Well, I appreciate that thought, and it's nothing personal when I kill you as well. Ah, right back at you. <laughs> um, it's not going to be Twinkletoe's turn. Twinkletoes sees these people beating up on Captain Finn, and that's not a thing that, that she likes. He is going to run into the room behind Tutru. Sophia, you get attack of opportunity. Cool. Yeah, I'll take a quick swing at her with my rapier. Righty. So that's going to be... Uh, it's only a nine. Okay. Nine we'll, does not we'll hit the armor class. Okay. She is going to have... She has a rapier in one hand, and she has a dagger in the other, and she makes three attacks. One with the dagger and two with the rapier. And those attacks on all on Astarok, because Astarok's the one that's outputting the damage right now. Fair enough. Um, that is a 15 to hit, a 15 to hit. And the last the, the last rapier attack is a dirty 20. Well, the dirty 20 will do it. Okay. But those 15s. Not not gonna cut it? Nah, it's, it's... It's not gonna You're work. You're gonna take uh, ten piercing damage as Twinkletoes, the satyr, is able to jab in between some of the armor and get one hit in. Uh, moving quick, moving fast, but not not able to find much purchase. Also, pest per pusher, thanks for the raid. Yes, thank you. Hey! Thank you. Much we appreciated. Thank you for the raid. Heels up. Yeah, it, it, so it stabs into Astrock and he's, ow, oh, I'm fighting this guy. All right, fair well, enough. Well, if you're fighting him, you're fighting all of us. That's yeah, the problem I guess with I the pirate seen that crew. Um, pirate, the first pirate deck wizard, Carmilla, didn't ever actually cast mage armor, so that's going to be her action, and she's going to stand next to her sisters. Lydia, it's your turn. All right, so Lydia is still, uh, was kind of still cowering uh, over by the edge of that table, but now that uh, the captain's doing a little worse for wear, um, she's going to try slashing again because she just doesn't learn. <laughs> and so uh, she takes out her rapier, and uh, that is rolls a nine. Dang it, these dice today. Ooh, yeah, nine total, not going to hit. No. Um, so I'll do uh, another bonus action where I think I get to disengage again, right? I get to do that every turn. Yeah, every oh turn. yeah, so so imagine she goes up, charges, ah, hits with the rapier, nothing happens. Oh crap, and then goes and scuttles <laughs> back again um, on hands and knees, moving literally just backwards, not looking behind her and gets back behind that table corner. Hey, you'll get it next time. <laughs> I, I just got to keep slashing, man. Just keep slashing. Yeah, good effort. <laughs> good hustle. <laughs> good game out there as she backs into Do the Do I get corner. orange slices afterwards? Yep. <laughs> Sophia. All right, I'm really getting tired of this. And so she grabs her staff and points it forward, and I am going to unleash uh, five charges of my staff of lightning bolts, and that's going to cast it at level seven. Oh my. And so I'm going to need our good, friendly Captain Finn to make a dexterity saving throw. Um, he, rolls a, he rolls a three. Okay. That's zero. Okay. So that's that's not going to be to 15, which is the DC for this particular magic right. item that I have. Yep, uh, and yep. then and then just for good measure, uh, Safia's eyes glow with this glowing. It's like when you see the bits of like hot water that boils up under the water, like the, like that, like those jets of hot water. Her eyes glow with that as I channel a little bit of divinity 
and I do what is called uh, Destructive Wrath, which means you can deal maximum damage instead of rolling whenever you do lightning or thunder damage. And so our Captain Finn just took 72 lightning damage. Jeez. Damn. Well, and then here's the question. Okay, oh no, you 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 go ahead. I was gonna say that seventy two is m- more hit points than he has left. Okay, so describe for me the uh, the destruction of Captain Finn here with the lightning. I think that yeah, I think what happens is I do the staff. And I go to fire it. And because I did the channel divinity, an actual bolt of lightning comes firing through the top of the ship and like bursts a hole in the ceiling and hits the, the, the staff and then shoots it forward into him. And then like you literally see that that anchor that he's using as a hook. There's so much energy and heat coming in that it actually melts. And then he is just electrified as then he falls not onto Astarok, but off like maybe backwards because he's being hit knocked backwards. Yeah. And uh, Safia um, takes her staff, puts it down, like blows it like you would a gun, like onto her staff. <laughs> and here's the question I have for you, Ruben. Yes. Um, if I cast a spell using an item, can I then cast a spell as a bonus action or am I pretty much like pushing it at that point? I would say that you're limited to one leveled spell per turn. That is a very fair assessment, and I will, I will, I will accept that as a as a DM rule because I just messed up your boss really hard. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I guess that's so. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's all I got now because I I can't open a door now because I just use an action to lightning bolt the boss to death. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I yield my time. Well. Uh, yeah, as you see the lightning come through the ceiling and blow a hole in the ceiling, you now can see the full moon, and you have the lighting of the full moon down upon you. Oh, I changed my mind, actually. Yeah. Continue, continue to describe, sorry. Okay. And it comes into your staff, and the energy from the lightning bolt bursts out directly into Captain Finn, and he does have a hand made of metal and a leg made of metal which is not helpful when facing lightning mm. damage. And he yeah. is, uh, he is fricasseed from the inside and he heals yeah. back over into his, uh, into his throne, his pirate throne, as it were. I agape looking up at nothing. Well, I, I, what I will add is that I forgot that the door is open. So yes. I will use my movement to get the heck, heck out of Dodge. So you, you you all see this happen, and then you hear Sophia go, okay, time to move, let's go. And then she just runs out the door. So okay. I think it's one, I think it's what, uh, I have 30 feet. So you have 30 feet. Do I get feet. Uh, impeded movement because Tutsuru's there? No, so you have double doors entering into this section uh, or the equivalent okay. of double doors because Captain Finn needs to get in and out. So yeah, I just didn't know. I didn't know if his big door was open or if just the little door was. So the whole big door is open. The whole cool. big door is open. Cool. Yeah. So then Sophia's like, "Cool, that's done. Let's go." And then she goes running towards her boat. Okay. Uh, are so. you headed for the bridge or are you headed yep. for the water? Oh, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna go towards the bridge, but I'm not gonna give this one attack opportunity. So I come running. Um, yeah. I. Uh, yeah. I think for now that's as far as I'm gonna go. Works for me. Uh, it's now going to be uh, Adrienne's turn. Adrienne is shocked and angered. How dare you kill the captain? No way you're going to get away with this. And she's going to cast, uh, she's going to start casting a spell and green energy kind of makes, uh, it's, makes a ball in her hands and she shoots a green sort of arrow made of acid at you. Uh, you know and- Bells got shocked. The captain. That's true. <laughs> uh, and that is going to be. What does she get? Plus five. Eighteen on Milf's acid arrow. And so you're going to take. Where are all my d fours? I had D4s. to make this character D4s a triton, and not a what? Not a water genasi, didn't I? You're going to take. Uh, Five plus three, eight acid damage immediately, Ooh. and two d four acid damage at the end of your next turn. Okay, 
Would she be considered within five feet of me, or is that too? Is that not five? No, feet? she's ten feet from you because okay. uh, five within five feet would be within uh, the melee the melee distance. Okay, cool, making sure. Uh, so that's her turn, and then um, Melanie's gonna kind of do the oh, and she'll move actually to intercept you in front of the bridge. Melanie is gonna do the same thing, moving over with. Uh, Oh, she'll move right in front and also cast Melf's Acid Arrow. Uh, yeah, that is fair. 6 plus 5, 11. That uh, one does not. So that one doesn't hit, but on a miss, the arrow splashes the target for half as much of the initial damage. So oh, you wow. still take 7 acid damage, but no okay. ongoing. Okay. Uh, and so those are a couple of spell slots used. Uh, and that is her turn. Dantilus sees you take some damage and goes, "Oh no! You should. I should, uh, guess I'll heal you." And he'll cast um, healing word from pointing from a bit away, and heal you for uh, six. He's just like heal right. from over on the boat. <laughs> I'll take it. And then he'll go. Oh, crap. And he'll back up and try to open this door into your cabin, which is locked, so he can't open it. Uh, Captain, Captain Finn is dead. The giant eagle has flown away. Deadeyes is still not really caring, steering the ship. It's Tatuturu. All right. Um, so Tutu... Okay, uh, big scary Cyclops is down. Uh, problem solved over there. Uh, let's get off this boat. And so she's going, I'm going to make for the door and I'm going to see everyone over there. I'm going to kind of look at them kind of dumbfounded. What are, what are you all doing? Why? I, I don't understand. You have a whole boat now to yourself. Like, Who's the new captain? Hmm. Make a persuasion check. I will. <sighs> no, that's a bad dice. There we go. <laughs> Twelve. They look at you, then they look at each other, and then they go, in unison, the three of them, the Minotaur person, the Leonin person, and the human person, look back at you and in unison say, we needed him for longer than we had him. We know who the captain of this ship already is. It's us. Ah. And you see their forms begin to shift and change. Ah! Uh -uh. That did not go as expected at all. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> on that note, I am going to summon, um, I, I'm going to do a healing word on Sophia. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's do that yep. at a level. Um, oh, and you actually you heal an additional four HP because I am a of the life. I'm a life cleric, and so we Thank do you. a little extra juging of healing from that okay. last one. Like, um, okay. And then, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, in healing. that case, in that case, um, maybe if you have something else you want to do on this turn, don't feel like you have to heal me because I'm not looking terrible now because I got oh. healed by Danny already. So, oh, that's right. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Well, and well, when they morph, oh, I guess I'm they're mid morph right now. Cool. Um, they're well, mid, while they're mid change. Doing, yeah, yeah, they're doing some weird shenanigans right now. So while that's happening, I guess I'll try to prepare for prepare for that uh i will summon my oh what does protection from good and evil do again uh da, 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 da. i'm gonna hashtag bless maybe i feel like that would be good yeah yeah 
Yeah, I'm gonna hashtag bless. Bless. Um, do I have to touch the person though? Let's see. Is it touch or is it look? Hashtag bless. No, I think it's I think it's everyone within a, a distance of you. Yeah, it yeah. does like a bunch of us. Yes, it does. Sweet. Yeah. All right. So Tutu is gonna look around behind her and she just kind of squints at the thing in front of her and looks very assuredly and then just kind of closes her eyes and lets out a little ha huh, and then opens them again and her eyes glow green and as she does this leaves like blow out from her and like this elemental blast and as they do everyone gets hashtag blessed nice nice um and what that oh. means for all of you is that um uh you when you make an attack roll or a saving throw um you get to roll a d4 and yeah i'm and blessing all also... three of you not me oh gotcha and what it means for lydia and astarok as well is astarok your tattoo glows and pulses a little bit and lydia on oh. your arm you get a similar glow glowy kind of spot and both of your armor classes increase by one for the duration of the encounter Ooh, yeah Sweet. Um, I think you have a little bit of movement left if you wish to use it. Otherwise, I mean, I'm pretty. I'm kind of a tank, so I might as well. Um, yeah. Now that I'm blessed, well, I'm not blessed, but yeah, I'll move up here. Okay. Let's see what these turn things turn into. Asterok, you have an angry satyr swashbuckler next to you, and a Ooh. dead Captain Finn. To be clear, the satyr has not changed it anything else, right? Correct. The satyr is just a swashbuckling person. So Astrog looks back at everybody at um at a uh, like uh Sophia and, and Tuturu running out. He's like, oh yeah, I mean battle's over. I guess let's just all leave. <laughs> he's right back to the satyr and he's like, some team members, you know? <laughs> you're in the middle of a battle. Sorry, what? You're trying to convince her? He's just bantering in the midst of <laughs> <laughs> fighting. You're like, those guys. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> sure does look like the fight's over. You should definitely turn your back. <laughs> yep. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a whack at it. Okay. Okay. So that is a 15. Does that hit? He does not hit the swashbuckler as she definitely oh. jumps Ooh. out of the way. Hey. That's not fair. I was aiming at you when you moved. All right. You missed. Next roll. Uh, this one is a 21. Does that hit? That'll hit. <laughs> yeah. Plus nine to hit is like, it's, it's pretty good. Uh. All right. And that does a, uh, oh, actually, that's a two. So I get to reroll it because I have my great weapon master thing. So that is 10 damage. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Good hit. Thanks. She says uh, with an axe in her belly. Now it's my turn, she says. Unless you have a bonus action or move. I guess I could. Have, have we even short rested since our fight? You had enough time for a short rest. So I would let you use your, your hit dice to recover some of those hit points if you so chose. Well, my thought is that every short rest I get an action surge again. That's my so You would definitely have the action surge, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, you know what? I'm going to hold off, though. Okay. It's her turn. It is going to be her turn. Uh, first mate Twinkle Toes is going to look at you with her rapier and her dagger and swing three times. Oh, and I did forget my bless. But that's all right. Uh, 17 to hit. That ain't going to do it. 19 to hit. That ain't going to do it. And a 10 to hit. That so ain't gonna do it. 19 to hit would totally have done it, but we just got that uh that magical little plus right there. You're right. welcome. So she slices with a dagger and it barely even grazes your armor. She stabs with a rapier and it's an okay stab, but you're a seasoned fighter, and then stabs with the rapier again in what should have been a hit, but green magic sort of blasts the point of the weapon away, and you take no effect from it. Uh, I mean, you're trying, and I think that I can see the technique in what you're doing, but, you know, you really gotta, like, lean your whole body into it. And she just has fire in her eyes, and she sees out of the corner of her eye her three 
uh, crewmates changing shape and looks very surprised by it. And uh, they change shape into a coven of sea hags. Oh, yeah, that's kind of what I thought was going to happen. And uh, it's one of them's turns. And she goes, you shouldn't have killed our tool. That was a mistake on your part. And she is going to, let's see here. Uh, she'll cast a spell on uh, Sophia. Okay. Uh, she is going to attempt to cast Ray of Sickness. So a sickening green energy comes out of her finger to, in your direction. Uh, and that is a... Do, 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 15 to hit you. Uh, that just hits. All right. You're going to take... 11 poison damage, and I need a constitution saving throw. Okay. Hang on a second. Poison. Okay, that is going to be 13 for the con save. Okay. Uh, DC is 13, so you make the save. Okay. Um, okay. And that was her turn, and they remain steadfast as a wall in front of this bridge back to your ship. Lydia, it is now your turn. Okay, so am I closer to the swashbuckler or to the sea hags? You are 10 feet from the swashbuckler and 15 feet from the sea hags, but you also would need to move to the doorway to even see the sea hags, as you are presently in the corner of the captain's room. Okay, then I'll go for, um, do some more slashing. I will go for the swashbuckler. All right. As you come up, Astro, like, oh, yeah, yeah, take a try on her. I think this one will be a good one. <laughs> well, it winds up even with my hashtag blessed, that still winds up being 12. 12's not going to do it. Swashbuckler is able to deftly maneuver out of the way. Um, and no bonus. Okay. Sophia. All right, uh, I am going to, um, I'm going to use another spell. And you you did not say, it's not stormy right now, right? It's a clear night. Um, I would say that after the lightning bolt, there'd been a little bit of storm gathering in, uh, in response to the lightning being called down. But it's not a okay. stormy night. I would say it's, it's partially overcast, pretty much directly over your boat and pretty okay. clear everywhere else. Okay, what, I, what I'm asking is I'm going to use Call Lightning, and if, it's, if I'm outside in stormy conditions, I get an extra dice of damage for that, and that's what I'm asking if that's part of that. Sure. I would say that having just cast the Lightning Bolt, stormy conditions would apply. Cool. All right, so I'm going to burn my other level 4 spell slot, and I'm going to Call Lightning, and I'm going to cast it right down. It's, it's a basically everything within 5 feet of the point that it lands is is has to make a saving throw so i'm going to put it right in the middle of the the coven so that all three of them take it and then the cloud saves so now this cloud is over us and so i need all of them to make a, a dexterity saving throw all right let me get a let's say it's about varish they all need dexterity saves you say yep Ooh, those are not bad uh 16 18 and 12. Okay, so the, the 16 and the 18, the 16 just made it, the 18 did make it, the 12 did not make it, and I'm going to go ahead and burn my other channel divinity to make it uh, rather make it uh, full damage. Okay. So um, it would have been 50 total, so the 12 does take 50. Uh, the other ones all take 25, and wow. all of them are pushed 10 feet away from me because I'm going to use... Ooh another feature of mine as a, as a class feature that if I attack someone with lightning or thunder damage, they get pushed 10 feet away from me. Oof. Right. They all so. get pushed and they all take a bunch of damage and they are all still alive. Although one of them, uh, uh, Carmela 
looks very worse for wear, barely hanging on. Adrienne and Melanie are uh, not looking too hot either. Um, but Which one is the one are, that looks worse for wear? Um, the I'll scoot her away, Carmilla, the one okay. that's further up. Okay. I'm going to use you my movement directly to the west. You wanted me to move them that way? Yeah, I mean, away from us. I was pushing them away, so that's fine because they were kind of crowding up on us. But I'm going to run up to her and be within melee range of her, and that's how I'm going to end my turn. Great. Sounds like a plan. Uh, it's now going to be Adrienne's turn. Adrienne is injured and not happy. And she is going to look at this being that just dealt so much damage to her sister and to her tool. And she is going to point a finger at you, and I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Okay, well, with the bless, that's a plus one, that's 12, plus eight, so that's 19. That saves. You feel the effects of a hold person coming on. You felt the effects of a hold person, one assumes. And this one, you're able to sort of fight off and remain as um, free as the, as the sea itself. Okay. Um, Not today, friend. That's right. Melanie saw that attempt and is going to also uh, cast a spell. Uh, and I'll take another wisdom saving throw from you. Okay. Actually, this time she has to move up to you. So she will touch you and cast a spell. Okay. Um, I roll, let's see here, it's 12. I roll a dirty 20 on that one. Okay, you save. You feel the ex ex pretty much the photonegative energy of the bless as the bestow curse spell does not take hold on your person. It washes away like the water. Okay. Um, would you like to have Dantilus do anything? Uh, he's still struggling with his door. Have him dance for us. <laughs> um, I mean, if he wants to give one of us bardic inspiration, we'd be happy to take it. Uh, I don't like, know if he has that. Let me look. Oh, never mind then. And I just, I, 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 to be fair, I did assume bard, but you're right. It's an NPC, not a PC. Yeah. I don't think he, yeah, he doesn't have bardic inspiration. Um, right. It's protect Odie. He will protect Odie. He will use the dodge action for his turn. I like turn. that. <clears throat> Um, Dead Eyes is just not caring. Still steering the <laughs> ship. Tutu I like his style. Great. Um, so, uh, how many of the hags are left? It's just two? All three hags are left. One of them is very injured. The one directly oh. to the left of Sophia is, is gravely injured. Sorry, I think you're cutting out. Okay, um, I'm going to... The one, the one that's, like, right by me is very, very injured. The other ones are doing okay. Right. Um, so if I'm concentrating, just refresh my memory. If I'm using a concentration just spell for Bless, am I able to cast another spell? It just can't be a concentration spell, right? Uh... Yes, I think that's how it works. If you're using a concentration spell for bless, you can still cast other spells. Just not other. You can Just only have one other, concentration have, spell running. Exactly. Right. You can only have one concentration spell up at a time. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to then cast Sacred Flame on the one that is very injured right now of the okay. hex. So, yeah, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to hold out right. my book. Is that a save from me? I just kind of try to power the energy and summon some flames. All right, dexterity. Yes. That's a natural one on the save. Yeah. Take five damage, you hag. Yeah. So I do not, I do not. And that is enough to kill that one as uh, Carmilla, one down, and she is, uh, she is no more. You should have just... And the other hags go, no! And Tutu will dust off her book. the wrong hags. 
And uh, I said, Tutu dusts off her book and she goes, you should have listened to me. Who's next? And she smiles. <laughs> I love Tutu so much. <laughs> and then uh, uh, she will anything else? for her bonus. Am I cutting up? Um, and for her bonus action, she will. Um, where was it? For her bonus action, she will. Oh, I was going to. Uh, she'll summon her spiritual weapon. Nice. Classic. And um, nice. she's going to make an attack with that. And she will attack okay. the uh, other hag. So okay, I will there's cast two that. other hags. Um, I'll cast whichever one is closest. Sorry, I can't Do have uh, roll 20 open right now. But all right. Did you want to move up or did you want to stay 15 feet away? I will stay far away because I can summon the, the spiritual, spiritual weapon, weapon can move. right next to the hag. Sure. Yeah, so I'm going to summon it right next to the hag. Right. Um, and image. my spiritual weapon is going to look like this awesome mallet weapon. made out of a tree branch. Mm. Um, very similar. Yeah, it's going to be a tree. Yeah. We lost Ashlyn. Yeah, Ashlyn, for some reason, I can hear you fine and you mm. seem normal to me, but everybody else seems to be struggling. Like Everyone else, like you're like behind them. So you might want to hop out after this turn and hop back in. Okay. Um, we didn't actually lose Ashlyn. It just appeared that way. To me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so basically, All right. spiritual, spiritual weapon, weapon attack, right up next to the hag. hag. Yes. Um, I will roll for damage. Oh, wait, yes. Okay. Go ahead and make a, this is a spell attack. Uh, so 24 uh, right to there. hit. <laughs> now I'm getting Ashen quite clearly. So maybe yeah. that things have fixed themselves. 24 to hit the hat. 24 hits. 24 would hit yes! uh, on Melanie there. Uh, yes. And so my, 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 uh, yes, spiritual hits. Open. Great. And it does, uh, this is so uh, weird. 13 damage. <laughs> It does Did we get that? Damage. 13 damage? 13, okay. Thank you. 13 damage! All right, 13 damage. <laughs> 13 looks, looks pretty damage. good. And Anyone who hears what Ashlyn says, just repeat it so yeah, that everybody yeah. can figure it out. Yeah, I'm I'm catching about 30% of, of what is being said there. Every, everyone uh, is super clear for me now, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully it cleans up. I'm hopeful. And, uh, we have we have a couple of raids I think to thank here. Uh, thank you to Pez Pusher and Zombie Orpheus. Yeah, those uh, are those are the older ones from earlier. Oh, those are the older ones. Okay. I mean, still, still thank you. Thank you. Still hanging out. Yeah, I just hanging out. We thank you. I just clicked yeah. over to the screen where I could see them, uh, <laughs> yeah. so I was very stupid. Uh, anyway, top of the round, Astarok. So Astarok uh, is going to turn to the satyr who's in front of him and be like, "So what? Are you going to turn into a monster like the rest of your crew?" I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what that is at all. I'm just a, I'm just a soldier of fortune. Wait, so uh, are we fight your crew? Are we, are we fighting them? What's going on? I don't know. I was following the captain's orders, but now that the captain's gone, I thought I was the captain. But now they are doing whatever it is they're doing and um, said something about using them, using them as a tool. I don't know what's going on at all. Well, quick truce until we deal with those people, and and then we can go back to whacking each other, yeah? Uh, make a persuasion check. <laughs> not not my strongest suit. Fine. At advantage, because oh. I think that you have a bit of a you have a bit of a rapport with this person. Yeah. Hey, Astro, can I can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Use your once day usage of your axe to use your strength instead of your charisma for That's your persuasion. That's a perfect idea. <laughs> Yeah, I hold my axe, and I'm just like, all right, quick truce. And it's just like holding the axe there certainly adds extra uh, emphasis to my... That's right. That's a very good idea. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us this season, um, Tuturu made me a special axe, which lets me uh, once a day use my strength instead of some other um, uh, ability modifier for one skill roll. Plus you so, have your, uh, your bless. Yep. That's true, yes. which means I get to add a d4? d4? Is... Yep. And I'm giving you advantage. So oh, add advantage oh. with a d4 and your strength. 
This. Oh man, if, if, if you don't make this roll, you're gonna feel so bad for yourself. Oh yeah, I am. <laughs> it's gonna be absurd. Uh, all right. I got a uh, 19 plus five, so uh, that's a 24. She looks at you. She looks at the ax. She looks at you. She looks at the strange people out on the deck of what used to be her ship. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Alrighty. <laughs> and then I'm going to turn around and uh, charge out of the door. And can I make it to and engage one of the harpies? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Yeah, you have 30 feet. All right. Then I will do that. I have an attack of opportunity. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going <laughs> to. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, believe, she just I, believe that one is, I believe that one is dead. Yes, the one that's, I can the one remove, right in front I can of me remove that one from the board. If, oh, if okay. The, uh, easier. Actually, Ruben, if you, if on oh, just yeah, future reference, my future on roll 20, if you like right click it and click that little circle, you can put an X over the ones who are dead. So that way you people oh, can see if you want to keep cool. them on the board. I yeah. will do that. How do I, how do I put a little X over it? So right click and then click on the little like uh, pearl looking did. thing, the little like circle thing. Oh, cool. And then click the X. Neat. Yeah, and you can X. do it on anyone who's dead. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. All right, so I run over. Oh, well, I can't quite make it to one, I don't think. From where you were, you could like have, here? You can get on top of uh, Tuturu's spiritual weapon. And that would, oh. be 30, that would be 30 feet. Yeah, and I can share space with a spiritual weapon. Yes. That ain't no big deal. All right. Uh, where's the spiritual weapon at? Uh, directly under Sophia, right there. Got it. Okay, cool. But that's where, oh, yeah, all right. Boom. Where's Tuturu? Uh, you ran just, past ran, just ran I'm past everywhere. Tuturu. 15. She has an opportunity on you. Because right. this, this is showing me that Tuturu is where I am right now. I don't oh. see no, a regular Tuturu. Tuturu. Is 15 feet to the to your left. Oh, right. No right at you, sorry. Sounds as good. long as she's not there for everybody else, everything is great. Yeah. Yeah. I run, uh, so I run. It's just a benefit. It's not, yeah. So I run over to the hag and I'm just like, all right, you're the new target. And, you know, hit twice. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Okay, so that is a 26. Does it hit? Yeah, 26 hits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, I get to reroll that one. Uh, okay, so that's 12 damage. Okay. One more hit. <laughs> the one that's been hit already, I think. Um, okay, so this, that's a 15. 15 would normally hit, but she has mage armor up. So that one blanks, sort of blips off of her mage armor. So Astarok swings at it and kind of like, after hitting it the first time, goes for another and kind of misses. goes, sorry, I'm off my game. I was just in a fight in there. Let's give this another try. Did you and, use um, your bless? Uh, I don't think it, does it work on attack rolls? Yep, bless. That's pretty mm -hmm. dope. Oh wait, I'm pretty sure. I'm not it sure. Does. Um, yeah, it's a uh, yeah attack yeah, roll. Attack rolls are saving 1D4. throws. Oh, tight. Well, I, I forgot on that one, so I, I, I'll I, I'll do it on this one because after I get there, I go. Oh, you know what? Let's give this another try, and I'm gonna action surge and uh, just take two more attacks. That's <laughs> yeah. that is a thing you can do. I'm gonna hit them four times. Uh, so that one's that's a 26. Does that hit? Yeah, that one's still 26. Yeah. Still hits. <laughs> um, okay, so that's 12 damage again. Okay, that one, uh, Melanie, you cleave in half, and uh, the former Leonin, now Sea Hag, uh, becomes a pile of Kelpie goo. Is there another I can step towards and finish the last attack so on? 30 feet to get to where you are, That's and a good you point. are 10 feet from Adrian. So I don't think you can. So so he swings, he's like, ah, oh, come on. Thought you had more in you. Just just out of range. All right, that's it for me. Uh, it's now going to be Twinkletoes' turn. Twinkletoes is going to uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25... 30 also can't quite make it to Adrienne. Um, I guess she could dash. She'll dash. 
uh, and then swing at Adrienne with her. So bonus action dash as a swashbuckler. Three attacks. One's a natural four, and the other two are going to hit. Nice. So she gets one in with her uh, dagger. I did not find my swashbuckler stats. That's annoying. Uh, one hits with her dagger, and one hits with her sword. So that's going to be... Five, seven, plus... Twelve total damage to the last remaining sea hag. Nice! You can hit something! <laughs> Oh, be quiet, you. He says mockingly and sort of like having a good time having a piratey, piratey kind of fight against this <laughs> surprise uh, hag encounter with people she thought was her friends. Um, it's now going to be the last remaining sea hag's turn. And she is all out of options. She... Hmm. I need everyone looking at this person to make a wisdom saving throw. Tight. Uh, Lydia, you may be out of the range. Five, ten, twenty, twenty-five. Oh no, you're not. You're still in the range. So if you're looking in that direction, uh, crap. Then you still, then you still need to make. A saving throw. Uh, Twinkle Toes fails. I got a five. That's a fail. Oh, Antlis no. fails. I got a one. Fail. Uh, do, do, do. I got a dirty 20. Success. Okay. I got a 13. Success. So those of you that failed, you are frightened for one minute. You can repeat the saving throw on the end of each of your turns with disadvantage if it's within your line of sight. Um, the two of you who saved, you are now immune to the horrific appearance of the Sea Hag uh, ability for 24 hours. At this point, she's going to jump overboard. And Twinkle Toes gets an attack of opportunity at disadvantage. Does my spiritual weapon? Yes. Spiritual weapons do not get attacks of opportunity. Thank um, you. They just sort of float and deal damage on their turn. Um, deal spiritual damage. That is going to be a hit, and she'll take eight more. And with her movement, the sea hag swims 40 feet down into the water. Lydia. It's your turn. Okay, so we still got the swashbuckler, right? Yep. Okay. Um, so I turned to the swashbuckler like, so we're all cool, right? We don't need to do any more stabbing or slashing or your captain. Everything's great. Yeah, Twinkle Toes is going to look around and see that there's four of you and see that Dead Eyes is stone cold useless. And is there looks at two dead hags and with a sad look in her face, looks back at the captain's quarters and says, I think we're good here. All right. Well, it, uh, you know, it was thank you for letting me slash at you. Uh, uh, it was some good pirate fun, I guess. I was going to say that I look forward to doing it again, but I don't think that that's you know what? I look forward to doing it again. Yeah. Okay, ooh. great. Rain check on that fight, kid. Rain check. Rain check on the fight. Well, I've got a ship to clean up. Get off my ship. Um, just because I can, because it's already because I'm already I'm still concentrating and that spell is active still, the, the storm cloud. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fire a lightning bolt straight down to where the hag jumped in the water and try to hit her. Because I have 60 foot of range on that. So can that hag make a it, uh, I mean, I'm assuming with advantage because she's underwater, but sure. Uh, would she be able to make a saving throw for that? She would be able to make a saving throw. I'm going to give her cover as well. Okay, that makes sense. I, you know, this is a Hail Mary, 
So yeah. or hail Fossa in this case. Huh. <laughs> uh, I hail Lydia, you might say. Say thirteen plus five plus one. Okay, so that will save. Okay, cool. Go with a shot. Okay, and then does when it misses, make, does then she I, take half damage or she will take half damage, and okay. it is a uh, a five d ten. So I'm just gonna roll that in D and D Beyond to make it faster. Yeah. Uh, a lot of damage. That's a lot of dice. Yeah, it's a lot of dice. Um, so let me go to that there and see what happens. Uh, where'd it go? What's going on? This? Sorry, this is a uh, call lightning. Scary. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm just gonna make this easy on myself. I'm just gonna roll. D one, two, three. Do you still four, have your? Five. Does the channel divinity still have a uh, effect, or is it a roll this uh, time? Uh, I that is up to you as a DM to call that. But I rolled a thirty. So if if okay. you want to say that it's full damage, you can. But that's your call. We'll we'll call it thirty. Um, okay. So she takes fifteen. Sounds good. Um, somewhere that you can't see, she takes fifteen. <laughs> okay. Cool. Just for the heck of it. Just like, just insult to injury. And then I'll disperse the lightning cloud. Like, cause I'm like, yeah, that's what you get. That's what I yell when it happens. Uh, now Captain Twinkletoes walks into the captain's quarters and you have, you can do what you, what you please. Oh, um, right. Well, that was a fun dinner. Um, should we leave? Yeah, we probably should. Yeah, I feel like we should bail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, Astarok's fine with bailing with everybody else. So, uh, what were those things doing on that ship? Sure seemed like the crew didn't know they were there. Yeah, I got that vibe as well. Um, it sounds like maybe they were using the captain for something. Um, I don't want to find out, so let's go. All right. All right, and you're able to make it back to the bridge of the moray, um, and remove the uh, remove the rope bridge connecting your two ships, and you can float off in a direction. And the dream trawler does not follow you. It is now okay. nighttime at this point. Um, it's pretty dark out on the open ocean. You're still relatively close to the harbor. If you want to sail back. Uh, I would say you're probably five miles outside of Data Harbor from the from the shore. So here's some thoughts. Um, First of all, thank you all for having my back. I know that I kind of kicked things off there unexpectedly. Um, it didn't feel like he was going to listen to reason, and I was tired of trying to defend your freedom. So I figured I would just literally do it. So uh, thank you for pitching in. I <laughs> appreciate that. Um, so here's – sorry. Oh, no, it's it's okay. Um, I it, You just kind of reminded me of someone, and uh, – it, it, we, I really, we really appreciate you standing up for us. You really didn't have to, actually, and it was really nice. So thank you. I mean, you're on, you're unofficial crew members, right? You, you you came on my ship, you get my protection, and people mess with you, they get us. And I, I kind of motion between me and Lydia. Not bad. So here's a question: What is this? <gasps> oh yeah, that thing. Actually, I've got like a counter question to go with that. See, we know what that is, but why did you have anything to do with it? Um. Okay. Well, counter counter question. We don't know what it is, and it only happened when you did something, admittedly nice, to me. All right. Well, we went on a hallucinogenic drug trip, and then we woke up with tattoos. <laughs> Okay, so, I mean, we've all gone on drug trips and gotten uh, tattoos. I did not explain why I have a tattoo. Yeah, so it makes no sense why you have that <laughs> at all. Astrock is very right. We got it a while back, and I have no clue why you have it. Yeah, we, we had two other friends who also had the tattoos, and it was sort of like a, a bonding thing between the four of us. And, and there's all this other stuff that kind of goes with it, with, like, trees. 
and traveling uh, places. Yeah. So are we going to be high now? Is that how that works? We're just like all of us are on an acid trip now, or do we get to skip the acid trips? Because it's been a couple summers since I've done one of those, and it ain't pretty. <laughs> I mean, the way it worked for us is with the acid trip was how we got it. You know, it wasn't acid. We were talking to a being of like endless power and age and and like uh, you know how it goes. Like Vasa. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Cool. Okay, so other point of reference um that we should probably talk about is that even though we didn't want to do all the nasty stuff that uh Captain Finn was was offering to us, he did bring up a really interesting point. And I want to test something out, but I don't want to rope you all into a second quest that you don't want to be part of. So, um, but here's the thought. Um, remember when he was talking about my banner? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and take a look at that banner and tell me what you see. And here's the thing. Uh, Lydia, you see the same logo that you already have always seen on the banner. Astarok, when you look at the banner on my ship, you see the insignia of the Boros Legion. Ashlyn, or Tutaru, sorry, when you look at the banner on my ship, you see the insignia of the Celestia. You see, both of you basically see an insignia that tells you this ship is friendly and means you no harm. Hmm. Uh, all right. Oh. Now, wait a minute. What's going on here? Do you see that, Asterak? Does that look like, does that look like the Celestia signet to you? Well, no, it's not all about Celestia. <laughs> Tutu, no. come on. I, well, I know that, Asterak. It's clearly, but... it's clearly the Boros signet. I've got it right here on my clasp and, okay. and also on my chest and it's up there. Okay, I know Mr. Boros for breakfast, but like, come on now, like. Uh, I have dough circles for breakfast. It's a well-established part of my character. <laughs> <laughs> but that is obviously a Celestian signet. Like, I I grew up just like looking at that every morning, like. Uh, yeah, if the Celestian signet is like a red fist with, with flame, uh, you know, light coming out of it. Yeah. Or if your red fist happens to be the best god of all of the gods in the pantheon. It could be. <sighs> and of course, as part of the outside, you still have the two moray eels, which are the consistent portion of the banner, regardless of what symbol you may or may not be seeing. Mm -hmm. So that's part of my ship. It's kind of how I effectively work as a smuggler is that I can get in and out of places without people immediately being suspicious of my ship because it they see it as being very friendly to them. But there is one other feature to my ship that Captain Finn touched on for a second that I don't... I've, I've used it. It's very effective. I was going to use it if we got to the ship before the hag thing happened, um, if we had to get away in a hurry but uh, we ended up taking our time with the murdering and stuff. So um, I have a theory that I want to test out. So I could do it right now if you want, or we could go dock somewhere, sleep, and then try it first thing in the morning. Or if you two aren't up for a quest on the open sea, I can let you go about your business and, and be free to go do whatever you want. So those are the options. Uh, we do the cool thing right now when it's like, well, fun and exciting, uh, but we're a little bit tired or we sleep on it or you go find your mom and we make our make our way or we want to go. What are you thinking? Um, I don't actually know where my mom's family is. I think she's dead as far as I know. But oh, oh yeah, I mean, it's nothing new. Sorry, uh, that's a sad thing to say, but uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm no, no, it's it's fine. I, you know, I was I was little, uh, but the the whole. Thing, all I'm saying is I don't have anywhere that I'm particularly trying to go. Okay, at least not you, clearly. Chuteru, do you have somewhere you're trying to go? No, not really. I the only thing I'm worried about is not like I'm I'm pretty drained from today. But what I guess what is the cool thing? Um, okay, so my ship has this ability 
when we're in a jam, and Lydia knows this, she, we've used it many a time. Um, when we're in a jam, my ship can no longer be where it is and be somewhere else, like a good distance away from where it is. Like I can use it. It's very, I can't use it all the time. It's like, a I use it takes a little bit of time, maybe like a week or so, sometimes more to recharge, but, um, it's a thing that I can do. And normally I have to know where we're going and it has to be relatively close to get there. But the captain said something, the late captain, I should say, um, said something, uh, captain Finn, F I N is in no longer amongst us. Um, <laughs> okay. um, that my banner could help us teleport to the world's end. So my theory is that maybe we, if we all think about that vision that we had and those mosaics, maybe it could take us to this horizon that we're supposed to try to find. So that that's my theory. So that's, it, it could be a lot of talk and then I'll do a cool thing and then nothing happens. Or it could be getting us to this mysterious beacon that is that is really interested in our attention. <clears throat> oh, yeah. When when Captain Finn was talking, you kept mentioning someone, uh, and you seemed really excited about it. But I, I have to admit, I don't really know a lot about about them. Um, I'm totally down for this, by the way. I'm just super curious as well because I missed. Uh, sailing school when we talked about people that do these things in class that I took here you with guys everyone sailing else. sailing school in this Alessian conclave? That's she was here. <clears throat> um, and so, yeah, could you tell me about that person? Khaleesi? Khalees? Khalisiphany? You don't know about Caliphae? Yeah, Caliphae. I totally f failed that class. Yeah, I mean, we, we know, but we want to make sure that you know. Yeah. At this, sorry, at this, Dantalus uh, sits up and, like, puts his hands on his chin and is like, I love that story. Well, then why don't you tell it, since you're such an excellent bard? I certainly can, but I, you know, as a magical uh, vessel of Thassa, I was... Thinking that you know, I mean, we could tell it together if you think I'm telling. No, no, it's fine. I got it. I, you know what? I, I'm a, I, I know it. So, of Actually, course. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna tell it. And you all look behind you. And standing there, off of the edge of the ship, is an embodiment of Thassa. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! She is translucent. She is um, shining with the starlight and moonlight, vague purples and blues and bits of white of the sea foam come off of her and she moves from off of the ship onto the ship and she maintains her form. But instead of being made of water, it looks almost as if she's made of the same wood that the ship is made of. And she walks on, and she has a seat on a stack of rope and some barrels. She says, we could tell it together. I, I At this point, I have immediately knelt, and I, am, <laughs> I have my holy symbol up, and I have my staff, and I am giving her full reverence. I am, I am very much in her reverence now, so she can do what she's going to do. Oh, Hi, yeah. I'm Astarok. That's your... Hello, Astarok. It's very nice to meet you. I've got a letter. Hi again, I'm Tutu. Hi. Hi. Oh, sorry. Is it hot out here or is it anybody oh, else? Just have you me? been getting her letters, by the way? She's been sending you a bunch of them and you have not been responding and that is very rude. Oh, I'm so sorry. I typically don't, I don't know if those letters have ever gotten to me. That's okay. It's all right. Am I talking really fast? Because I feel like I'm talking really fast. You're fine. Cool, cool. You're fine. It's, cool, cool. it's quite all right. And your your name is Lydia. 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 And she extends her hands and puts them around one of yours. She says, "I'm so sorry I didn't get your letters." 
But now that I know that I should keep an eye out for them, I'll get them. Um, and much like at any uh, Jonas Brothers concert, uh, when they reach out and touch a child, uh, Lydia immediately faints. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. All right. Okay. I think um, Sophia breaks from her like reverent bowing to catch her friend and like <laughs> like lays her down gently and then tide tide mother it is it's been so long since I've seen you and I I thank you for blessing my ship with your presence. Of course, of course. I sensed that uh well, I sensed that some of the power that was granted to you and your family was used. So I came by to make sure that everything was all right. Yes, well, Level 1 Geek rated us, and I felt that we needed to give them some of our joy to channel it out. <laughs> Thank you, Level 1 Geek. Hey, Thanks for the raid. Thank Welcome, you. everybody. Yeah, well, I'm glad I'm glad to see that you're all okay. Uh, young man, what are you doing? And uh, Dantalus is, like, furiously scribbling in his notebook. He's like, oh, uh, nothing? In the notebook. Hands over the notebook, and she opens it and chuckles and says... My cheekbones are a little higher and hands it back. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to hear the story of the Caliphate? Yeah. I'm game. Lydia well, has started waking up. Yeah, story time. Let's, let's do it. It's a well-loved, well-known story about a human trickster from Melitus. And she looks at Lydia. <laughs> who sailed on a ship called the Monsoon. And she was the most skilled mariner that ever did sail the seas, or so the tales tell. And she was also the first um, mortal to decipher the secret patterns of the winds, which made me very mad. Rightfully but so. But she sailed over the edge of the world and into Nyx using those winds and claimed her place among the stars. And now I count her as one of my chosen um, prophets, demigods, whatever, so what cool. have you. So cool. There is there is a epic poem that has been written, not by me, of course, called the Caliphaea. The lyrics of which some of you may have heard before. And she looks, gives a knowing look. At Sophia. Then there's more to the story, of course. There's the events with Daxos many years ago and all of the gods coming together to confront the champions of the underworld and yada, yada, yada. But at that point, Caliphae was already ascended to the sort of um, chosen status. Ah. That's right. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That jogs my memory now. I remember. I must have fallen asleep during that. How yeah, could you fall asleep it. during the Caliphaea? It's the greatest poem that's ever been written. <sighs> yeah. You know, I don't know how. I bet, I bet someone cast a sleep spell on me. I got the vibe. It was a pretty long poem and it's like full. It form. is for, for mortals. It's a long poem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess that's how you could fall asleep. I mean, For me, no, I mean, yeah. If you, if you fall asleep during awesome stuff, I guess. Yeah, stop falling asleep during awesome stuff. You said so many words. I, I'm gonna say for Astrolog and Tutaru, you seem to have actually offended Sophia. Like she oh, actually no! looks really hurt that you're saying these things about this poem. Let's just put that. Oh, no. Gasa is just grinning and having a good time. It's like, oh. it is a long for for a poem meant to be read by mortals. It is a bit of a long poem. I mean, how would you tell the story of Caliphae in this short poem? Yeah, exactly. Well, it and Tutu picks up on this. I'm going to assume or I can roll. Um, and uh, she will say, well, uh, the reason I ask is because I did see how interested you were, Sophia, and I, I want to understand uh, what inspired you uh, about her, and it seems like she is very and it's uh, adventurous. And yeah, tell me more. Tell me more about why you want to follow in her footsteps, at least, or travel where she's been. Well, I mean, 
Caliphate gazed upon the coastline, certain that her desires and her destiny called her here, where the mist-shrouded rocks sang promising glories undreamed of. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah neat. She just was awesome. Like, she just would travel the world and she would do stuff. I mean, I've, I've traveled the world and done stuff, but, you know. Yes, you I have. have. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. But to travel She's to the world's it. end? I know, I want to. Oh, you're traveling to the world's edge. Why? Um, I thought maybe you wanted us to. Do you, should we not? Should we not go? No, you can. It's just an interesting, uh, interesting place to want to go. Is well, it just curiosity, or we had a dream that told us we should go there, and then like an old lady was like, "That dream is probably true." Interesting. Tell me, tell me, tell me more. What, what, what was this dream? Was it drugs, like Lydia said earlier? I don't think so. Unless mm. there was drugs in the bread in the prison. Was there drugs in the bread, Lydia? Was there drugs in the bread in the prison? No, I would have had a way better time if there were drugs in the bread in the prison. <laughs> Ada yeah. Harbor. It could have had ergot. You could have gotten a little bit of that. You know what I'm talking about. But I could let's do. assume for the moment it wasn't drugs. Okay. I think we we I think for sake of not repeating, I think it just happened on the on the show two weeks ago. I think we described the vision as as it was. So the the sure. things we each saw and the feelings and the yep. when we go through it. And I think that Sophia is using very like epic poem type of language to do it, uh, and it sounds awesome. I mean, I can roll if we want to do performance, but you're quite okay. good. Vasa <sighs> says, "So a vision from Medamai, the Sphinx." No wonder you, it's it's hazy and weird. Metamai is a bit of a crazed individual. That's what happens when you are able to predict the future. And of course, being a vision of World's Edge, which is where many prophets of Krufix live. Krufix, again, a, even for the gods, a crazy person. Um, very clearly obfuscated the true meaning but it does sound like you've correctly uh, interpreted the ramblings of a mad god and a mad sphinx that are nice, but, you know, a little crazy. Um, so how do you plan to get there? Well, we didn't really know, um, but the Cyclops we just killed said we could probably teleport there. So I thought I might try to use the, the, the banner on my ship and just like take us there. Interesting idea. I look forward to seeing if, if that works. Now, you two. You don't belong here, do you? And she sort of narrows her eyes at Astarok and Tuturu. Mm? Are you walkers of planes? Um... Oh, not I've... exactly. No, 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 no. Um, no, no. We are not. We do not walk planes. We walk, mm -hmm. um, I, unless you're talking about like grassy planes. Yeah, I'll sure. say like planes and mountains. Big uh, into yeah. that. Okay. Yes, sure. yes. I was just checking. You had a bit of a energy about you that was. Mm. When I say otherworldly, I don't mean from Nyx or the Underworld. A little bit different, but that's neither here nor there. I'm just a little wary of people who I can't verify are from Theros. Mm. One of them stole my Bident one time. And another one tried to essentially destroy the entire world. So uh, those from other planes are not my favorite. Well, well, this I, one's from here, I think. He just didn't know it. Yeah. Really? And she looks closer at you and peers into your eyes and says, I can tell that you have a little bit of Theros in you, but there's a little bit of something else as well. It's possible you are you were born here. Yeah, well, you know, I've been around a lot, and I don't remember being born, so who's to say, right? That's fair, that's fair. And Lydia, <laughs> I'm so pleased to have gotten to meet you. I'm so sorry that I didn't receive your letters previously. And I would like it if we could be better friends. Does that sound 
<laughs> yeah, friends, good friends. I love friendship. Friendship is so cool. The fast is like kind of darting her eyes around like, okay, all right. Um, well, my inbox is always open now. And now that I know that you're writing letters, I will receive them. Thank you. Of course. Sophia, before I go, um, have you checked in Odexi, uh, checked in on Odexi's recently? No, is he okay? He should be fine. I haven't talked to him in a while. I was just okay. seeing if you had. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I, I, have no reason, I have no reason to worry, but I was just curious because his dad, in. his dad kind of got in trouble when I when that happened. So I tend to kind of mm. give them a wide berth unless they they tell me they want me to come visit, which is like not often because, you know, I'm bad. Sure, anyway. sure. And from what I gather, Soleil is fine as well. I haven't seen her in a while, but yeah, she kind of does her own. They they do their own her, thing. They do their own thing. Your whole family has always done. I have no reason to worry. I didn't mean to put worry into you. Okay. But uh, I just wanted to, you know, check in and see if you knew how the family was doing, you know. Someday they may have this. That's true. If they want it. If they want it. Well, nice to meet you all. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's been super cool. Before I go, is there anything else I can help you with? Do you want any um, advice, or you wanna you wanna hear another story? Do you want some insight on something? Should we go to the world's end? If you've received a vision from one of the great prognosticators of our world. And it's connected to one of the gods. Surely, you should follow it. Whether, whether I know what it means or not, it could very well be something I don't want you to do. But that's none of my business until it becomes my business, effectively. But if you were given a vision, if you were given a quest, if you were given something to reach for and strive for, you should absolutely do it. Yeah, that was rude to me because you asked me a question, but like I talk to you all the time. So if, if my friends want to ask you questions, they can I you know they can do that. I, I I'm sorry that I, I just I'm very excited to see you and I don't know how to do it. We don't normally talk this directly and it's very Yeah. Uh, I have I, all the time in the world. All right. I got a quick one. Uh you said you could sense a bit of Theros in me, right? You got yeah. like region you could hone me in on, like the sense you're feeling there? I can't really hone in on geographical region. I can sense that you have parentage of Theros. Mortal parentage of Theros. Whether that is true anymore, I have no idea. Where they live, I couldn't say. But I can tell that one of your ancestors, or more, are from this plane. Well, I guess it's a start. I'm on the right track. When the answer is somewhere, anywhere. <laughs> it's, the, it's the best that I can do, unfortunately. My domain is the sea. I can tell you that they are not on or in the sea. Great. That actually narrows it down a lot. Um, I guess the only question I have is, since both you, Lydia, and Sophia are now in on this, uh, whether it's your choice or not, we actually have these magical tattoo thingies, and when I, um, when I cast one of my spells, it transferred onto them as well. Do you, do you know what would cause that, or why, or like what type of magic this is? She will, may and I? She'll hold out her, yes, please. You will hold your hand, and it feels like water. It doesn't feel like hands. It feels like someone is... It's like not even... It's not solid. Yeah. Very difficult to describe. Ooh. And she holds and looks at the, at the tattoo, and she says, This is old magic. 
not magic that I'm particularly familiar with. This is magic that the oldest gods used to use. Back during... And then she cuts herself off and she says, a long time ago, before my time even. Oh. There was a time before you? Oh my god. Yeah, there was a time before the gods. Well, most of the gods. This is magic from a very long time ago. Very strange to see it here. It's not dangerous. It's just okay. <laughs> I'm interested to see what this means on our world. This sort of magic hasn't been seen on our world in quite some time. Hmm. And she'll let go. Me too. <laughs> can, can I ask one thing? Anything. Could you like say my name again? <laughs> Lydia. And she faints again. <laughs> <laughs> I catch her again. <laughs> I really like these drawings that Lydia's done. They're very creative. Uh, I'm glad you like I wasn't sure if you liked them or not, and I was like worried about it, but I, I was like, well, she loves her in her own way, so I... People, people worship in their own way. Okay. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. You're not taking up any of my time, but it seems like you have somewhere to be. I mean, I guess a vision's a vision. We got to start going towards the edge. We have the end of the world to meet. Okay, that came out wrong. I'm the edge of the world to meet. Oh, yeah. I'm sure we'll see each other again. And Sephia and Lydia will talk again soon. I hope so. Cool. Good. cool. You're so cool. And she will stand up and sort of brush off her planks. And as she does so, they become water once more. And she walks back into the ocean and fades into the waves. Well, that was cool. Oh my gods. That was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Dantilus is just like jittering with excitement over in the corner. Teacher is going to poke Sophia and Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? <laughs> that really only your God. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. She knows who I am. She noticed me. It's fine. It's cool. It's fine. I'm good. What? No, I'm fine. I think she said your name at least twice. She said it like three times. Oh, and you were uh, passed out. She said that she liked your drawings. She did. What? She said you liked them a lot. Mm -hmm. We all heard it. I'm going to marry that goddess someday. Yeah, I mean, two for the stars. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so... As you're sort of... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say that during this, you noticed that Odie is here. Odie seems a little bit bigger than when he left the Dream Trawler. Looks like he's a he's a slight larger crab than he was, and he has di slightly different frills and spines. Um, is there a chance he's a different crab? Did we pick the wrong crab? <laughs> I would say Sophia can make an intelligence or animal handling or insight on your crab. Can I just, just ask him? <laughs> sure. Hey, Odie? Are you Odie? Yeah, I'm Odie. If you're not Odie, you have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Odie. What happened? Did you did you eat that bird or something? No. Wait, what do you mean what happened? And it, he looks down at himself. You're bigger. Am I? How Here's the I... question. Did it happen after? Like, was he the same size when we got on the boat, but now he's bigger than that fossa left? Or yes. Okay. So I I, I was like, he I knew he was on the boat when we left. Okay. Um I think I think Thassa did something to you. You're like a swole. You're like a swole crab. Am I? And he, he like flexes a claw. He looks and goes, Oh, it is a bigger claw. That's pretty cool. <laughs> And he, like, looks over at Dantilus. Dantilus is like, whoa, did you just tell him to 
No, 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 you're, I, you two are cool now. You protected him when he was in danger, so I'm... Odie looks at Dantilus and, like, goes, I just like frightening him sometimes. Oh, no, it's hilarious. Keep doing it. Okay, I'll keep doing it. <laughs> so I'm bigger. How much bigger? Well, I don't really, I don't really understand. I mean, I'm still smaller than you. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you exactly how much bigger you are, but I'm going to put my hand in my mouth, and it's going to sound like Ruben saying it. So you mm -hmm. are... So instead of being a crab-sized crab, <laughs> it is now like a chihuahua-sized crab. This is exactly what Sophia says. <laughs> yeah, you're like the size of an animal that I'm not sure exists on this world. Fair enough. <laughs> and you also notice that the, the, um, the shell is in a slightly different pattern. Like, the claws are bigger. There's a blue tinge to some of it. The frills and spines have grown. It's definitely still Odie. It's just a larger version. It's like an evolved Pokemon version of Odie. Sort of. Okay. You had to you had to do it after I already bought a stuffed animal of Odie to have <laughs> next week. Cool. All right. Sure. I could have bought the blue well, crab instead. <laughs> Odie looks exactly like the stuffed animal version. Okay. It's has okay there you cool. go uh, old odie looked wrong this big is the stuffed animal like this big uh probably not that's fine oh okay well <laughs> however big it's a toy don't worry about wants it. it to be that's how big odie is uh but it is no the, uh he is noticeably larger well that was exciting it was the best thing that's ever happened and i had two kids so that says a lot you have two kids? Wait, you have two kids? Yeah, that's who she was talking about. She's talking oh. about my kids, so. Oh. I have a son and a child. They they don't have a they don't identify the gender, so I just that's. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and you don't. Uh, that makes so much sense. You keep them away from this so that they're safe. Well, that's more their choice. Yeah, I have. They're they're adults, so they can kind of make their own oh. their own choices. Well, there's so I have I have a Texas my son. He's 27, and he lives with his father, who's a Triton. And then I have Solea, who's they are they are older. They're 42, but they live with their mom because they like to learn. Their mom's like a sorceress, and they like to learn. Very uh, cool. From there, from her. So, uh, uh, do you, what did that god do to your pet crab? What's that? What did that god do to your pet crab? I think he. I think she made him swole. No, oh, nice. This isn't something that normally happens to him, so I'm kind of just like I'm learning as as you are as what's happening. All right, well, I like you, swole crab. <laughs> Astrock kind of gets down and gets in the face of the crab. <laughs> Odie will look d directly into your face and be like, like put up Dukes. <laughs> That's my kind of crab. Cool. Like skittles back and forth. Well. I mean, I guess you're stuck with us now. We had a vision, and the god told us to hang out. Yeah. Well then, may I welcome you formally aboard the crew of the Moray. Well, and, uh, I mean, this isn't going to make a lot of sense, but uh, since you got the cats, I guess you're, uh, you know, part of our, like, minted pack thing now, so. Yeah. Or, who knows what we'll call it. Okay. That okay. sounds interesting. I, I never had a gang name before. That sounds like a crew name. I'm part of a crew. Do we get jackets? Mm. This is so cool. Yeah, we can make jackets. We can I mean, make jackets, yeah. No, we, we can put jackets together. I mean, what do we got on hand? <laughs> um, seaweed and more seaweed. And then like some, some other like, some like eggs that are like pickled for the journey. I would like right plants, right? Do the you can oh, with totally. That. We could do dried seaweed, and then when we, uh, when we lay it out, you can let it dry for you know probably twenty four, thirty four, blah, blah, blah. And she's gonna ramble on for a little bit about like how <laughs> we can totally make seaweed work and make it into this beautiful DIY jacket. And as you're saying it, you realize that Sophia has like this kind of like cloak on that is made out of that exact material you're describing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, it's um, kind of like what you're wearing. Yeah, it's lovely. Uh, Thassa provides, and I like to mm. embrace what she gives me. So, cool thing that teleports us. You all want to try it? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Why not? 
All right. Cool uh, thing. Cool thing. Everyone, think about what you saw in the vision, and then I run over to the the steering wheel, the the of the the helm of the ship, and I just take it and I just throw my arms across as fast as I can. So it's like I said, instead of like turning the ship, the whole wheel just spins suddenly, and it almost feels like the ship flips, but it doesn't actually like things don't go flying off of it, and it doesn't go underwater. But it just kind of like it's almost like it's re it's almost like the world moves around it instead of it moving, and then where do we go? So you're activating the banner and you spin the wheel and you look over at the compass that's stapled or or secured to the helm and it with too spins. What was that? I said with a staple. Yes, with a staple, <laughs> um, and it spins as well and. The world begins to rotate faster and faster and faster around you. And it's almost as if a whirlpool forms of the sky, not of the water beneath you. The water beneath you, calm, as it always is. But the sky sort of becomes a, a cyclone of stars and clouds and milky distant galaxies. And... You all have the vision in your head of the memories of where you see yourselves in the future, of Metamai speaking to you, of the smoke rising from the bowl, and thinking about whatever it means to be at the edge of the world, whatever it means to be at the horizon. And you all sort of can't really it goes faster and faster and spins more and more wildly and you all black out and you wake up and it's daytime the waves are lapping against a shoreline you all feel as though you've taken a or had a good night's sleep the sun is rising the tank is clean. And you look over and you see a temple with beautiful white columns. There is a pathway leading from your beach and dock up towards the temple. Astarok and Tuturu, you recognize this as the temple that you two saw when you and Lucian and Velma were briefly on Theros as the temple at the world's edge and beyond you see the two great trees that almost look like hands reaching towards the sky and emerging from the temple is a figure with two hands clasped in front of her and two ghostly purple appendages feeling the leaves as she walks past the hedges and she says Welcome, and welcome back. And that's where we will call the episode tonight. All right. Yeah. Nice. Woo! Very nice. Astro and Tutor are like, we have been here before. Oh, this yeah. is awkward. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the Gen Con episode, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was cool, y'all. I, I hope you had a good time. Yeah. Um, I certainly had a good time. I thought that that was that went in a in a wild direction. You guys really destroyed that pirate crew. <laughs> um, that was that was supposed to be a much tougher encounter than it ended up being. But uh, but yeah. So uh, tell the folks at home where they can find you. All right, we'll start with me again. Uh, <laughs> Hi, my name is Jordan Pigeon, and you can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. Also, uh, check out some of the older shows here on Saving Throw. Go back, watch through our YouTubes and stuff. I I'm I'm in a, I'm in a bunch of them. Go watch Wild Cards. That that was that was a pretty good little series we had there. Sure was. 
Hey, y'all. You can find me on Twitter at Riley J. Silverman and on Instagram at Riley Silverman. And uh, you can find some of the writing I've done about D&D on dndbeyond.com. And I actually was on the video that was released towards the end of the weekend. That was the announcement video for the uh, the Von Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. So that's a fun little video that I'm in with with the new head over there, Joe Starr. It was awesome. Ooh. And, of course, uh, Melly and, of course, B. Dave Walters. That was a really fun video to be part of. And also, I just found out today that next Tuesday, I will be on life action role play with a fun Whoa. character I'll be playing. Ooh. So that'll be cool. What? And uh, that'll be good for tonight. You say That's tonight. awesome. That's yeah. great. Um, I guess I'll go next. Uh, Danielle Radford, you can find me at just Danielle Radford on Twitter, Danielle underscore Radford on Instagram. Um, I am one of the writers of the Honest Trailers. There's a new one tomorrow. Go check it out. Thank you. Exciting. Uh, I'm Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Twitter as Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Instagram as Rards Ashlyn. You can also find me on AshlynRose.com if you want to see my voiceover demos. And then I am also part of a charity stream this Wednesday um, with Megan, uh, who is also part of Wild Cards. Um, and it is called, sorry, I'm looking up the name right now. Um, where was it? Um, it's part of the, um, oh my gosh. Jasper's game day. Jasper's game day. Yes. That's why I was trying to look it up. Cause I thought she tweeted it and I thought I had the information. But I know I she put it on Instagram. It Let me see if I can find it on Instagram. Yeah. Cause I'm not seeing it on Twitter, but Jasper's game day. It's Wednesday at 7 PM and it will be found. And if you follow me on Twitter, I will tweet out the link because I cannot find it right now. But it's for an amazing cause um, and it's for charity and we're going to be playing all night. It's a, a Savage Worlds uh, kind of like we're going to be dying a lot and it's great and it's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that and let's raise money for a good cause. Yay. Nice. Excellent. Awesome. Hi, everybody. I'm the Internet's Ruben Bressler. You can follow me everywhere at M-O-X-R-E-U-B-Y. Uh, I am part of the Magic Mike's podcast, which does Magic the Gathering news. I am the Dungeon Master for Tales from Tetheria over on the Laser Corn YouTube channel. Uh, and this week, I'll be on the Life Action Roleplay channel uh, Thursday, uh, helping develop a rule set for a game. I think Ooh, neat. Nice. it's going to be working with Ryan Omega, who's appeared on this program in a past season. Yeah. I think we're developing a rule set for game stonks. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I'll find out. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Oh um, and you can follow me everywhere at M-O-X-R-E-U-B-Y. And uh, fans of this channel, you should also tune in Wednesday. Come on back for all new All Games No Masters, which is our GM-less uh, uh, gaming program, as our crew take on the RPG dialect. So mm. the stream begins Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here on Saving Throw Show, 7 p.m. Pacific on Saving Throw Show. Thank you all so much for joining us every, each and every week. Um, please check out our link tree, follow Saving Throw on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, please subscribe, do all of those things, and, uh, and we'll see you right back here next week for a new episode of The Broken Pact. Good night, everybody. <laughs>